In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to attach objects to paths to do animation in a slightly different way. Uh, but first, I'm going to demonstrate what uh, objects we're going to be animating. Uh, I'm going to do the paper airplane, I think, for my demo. Uh, but it depends on the type of reference I can find or shoot. Uh, but I've got three different objects here in order of difficulty. So we've got just a paper plane in the center, which is, I think, by far the easiest. Uh, you just attach it to the path and use all of the path controls to control it. It has no native controls itself, it's just a piece of geometry. We have a butterfly over here. Uh, it's meant to be attached to the path via this controller, which is really the only controller on the butterfly. I did add one extra channel here, the flap control. So here I am selecting the word, middle mouse dragging, left and right, and it can go 180 degrees up and down, no bend or anything in the wings uh, for this example. It's just a very, very simple rig that we could attach to a line. Uh, this one is easy, but not as easy as the paper plane because although it requires that we move it in the same way, we're going to attach it to a line, a butterfly does a lot of eccentric up and down movement as it moves. So it's intended that although you attach this to the line, you're able to still translate it up and down as it moves along the line. Um, so that you can have that bobbing movement without having to craft a line that goes bounce, bounce, bounce all over the place. Although that is a way that you could do it. Okay. Finally, we have a hummingbird over here. The hummingbird's by far the hardest because although its movement is quick and precise, uh, the shape of the line is very complex. It moves very quickly um, in sharp angles. It tends to stop in position, um, which is something that's a little tricky to do with the line. You just have to have two keyframes on the same uh, U value on the line uh, and it has a lot of overlap in the body as it moves. So this large controller is meant to be attached to the line so you wouldn't animate this one you just um, stick it on there and then use the rest of these controls on the inside to move the hummingbird in more precise ways. This red controller is a global control for the entire hummingbird so you can offset its movement from the line uh, move it around, rotate it, do everything that you need to do. And in addition, I have two extra controls on uh, this one for flap. So same as the butterfly, we can go 180 degrees up and down like that. And we've got body bend for overlap. As a hummingbird flies, uh, its body bends quite a bit. Um, and we might need this for a more cartoony effect so we can bend the entire body up and down like this. Okay. Then I have a head angling controller, so for animating the hummingbird looking around or doing any acting that it might be doing, we've got that control there. The tail, same thing, we've got a controller so that we can flap and vibrate the tail however we might need to, which is something that happens quite a bit uh, as the hummingbird is flying as well. And then we have the wing controller here, so we can angle the wings, uh, rotate them forward and backward and do everything that we need to do that isn't flap. So the flap is still over here, but with these two things combined, we can make the hummingbird do just about anything we want. Again, this is a nice, simple rig. This is really only meant for a uh, learning situation to try to replicate real-world movement. This isn't like a feature-ready rig or anything like that. Uh, I can't really make very, very complex rigs, but it should be good enough for any sort of learning situation that you want to apply it to. Okay, so for now, I'm going to hide these two controllers. Actually, let me just go ahead and unreference them so that I can get the paper plane by itself. So reference editor. I'll just click off the butterfly and the hummingbird. Okay, and we'll just deal with the paper airplane right here. So I'm going to show you how to attach it to the line and how to do a little bit of quick animation, really just for demonstration purposes at this point. We haven't really started our animation in earnest yet. Uh, so to start with, you need a line to animate this on. We've got a few options here, CV Curve, EP Curve, Bezier Curve Tool, Pencil Curve Tool. Um, these are all some of the options that we can use. We could also just use a NURBS um, shape, so we could do a circle, uh, for instance, which would serve our purposes. But let's go ahead and draw a curve. So the CV Curves Tool will allow you to draw on uh, any plane that you're looking at. So you could use an orthographic view to draw on, and that is recommended if you want to get a specific uh, orientation in space, but I'm just going to free draw in perspective here. 
So when you click a few spaces on this, you get what looks like straight lines. This isn't actually the curve yet. You don't get the curve with this, uh, which one did I choose? I chose the CV curve tool until you hit the fourth vertice. Then you're actually getting the curve. So um, this curves tool will allow you to draw points, but they're not going to touch the line. They're only going to shape the line. So you see there as I click more and more, it averages the nearby points together and creates a curve with them. When you hit enter, after you're done, it will create the NURBS curve. And this is what we could attach um, the object to the line. If you want to edit these curves after you've drawn them, and you almost certainly will because you're not going to be able to draw them the first time uh, perfectly, you can just hold right click over them and we can select control vertex and it will allow us to move each one of these vertices and shape the line. After you've drawn the line for the first time, this method of controlling the line doesn't change. So regardless of the method that you use to create it, um, choosing the control vert vertices doesn't really um, change how it is that you're going to have to custom shape the line. So if we wanted this to curve upward, we can grab these points, move them around, and we can have a more interesting flight path. Okay, let me show you the other curve drawing methods. EP curve tool. This one will allow you to draw points in the same fashion, only this time they will fall directly on the line. So whichever your preference is, there's really no difference um, except for how you prefer to draw them. When you hit enter and then right click control vertex, we're back to the same controlling method. We've got these vertices hovering outside the line so that we can control them. Okay. Next option, Bezier curve tool is similar to our graph editor functionality. We've got these Bezier handles that we can drag out in a direction. And if we click and drag, we can shape this line. I sort of prefer this one because it's really nice uh, editing capability. Uh, and we should be able to go back, right? click on one of these points and readjust them just like this. And let me see if I can get it to work here. And if I hold down control, you can break the line so that you can get these pointy, curvy shapes just like this. That's holding down control. If you hold down control and drag from the center vertice, you can make it smooth again. So I like this method because you can get some interesting shapes very quickly and easily. Hit enter, it's turned into a NURBS curve again. Control vertex, we've actually got the Bezier handles this time. So that's really nice. So that that is kind of preserved. And everything else is the same. You can just move these points around. So by far I prefer this method. Uh, let me show you what it is you'd have to do if you wanted to get a, a pointy wave shape with one of these other tools. I'll go ahead and choose um, CV curve tool. Okay, so here I am drawing this shape and I've got the beginnings of my wave here. Now if I wanted this to be pointy and curved backward this way, we'll see if I put a point back here we get this round kind of edge to it, which isn't very attractive as a wave goes. Uh, when I go back to the control vertexes, I can sort of get a pointy shape if I fake it a bit. If I move these points very, very close together like that, you can see I can kind of get a wave shape there. Um, I could even like scale these two inward as close as I can get them. Uh, but it's never quite perfect. Uh, we can add more points to any of these lines if we'd like to. Just hold the right click button on the line. Choose curve point. Curve point will allow you to draw a point somewhere on the line. As you can see, it's dragging along the line. I'm just clicking and dragging. So I'm going to add a point here. I'm going to hold shift and add a point here. And then up at the top, I can go to my surfaces menu, edit curves, and insert knot. Insert knot will put more points on this line. So let me go to control vertexes now and see I've got some more vertices to play with here. Um, before I had less points. Okay, it looks like my view was not updating for a second there. And I can use those extra points now to shape my line even more precisely than it was before. And that's true of all of these drawing methods. So let's just use this line for now to attach our paper plane to. First you want to get the plane or whatever object it is right on one of these endpoints. And here's how you do that. Um, from our animation uh, projects, we've been moving an object from each one of these pointers. 
to be precise about how we move it. This time though we're going to move it from the center box so that it's freely moving in space because what we want it to do is we want it to snap in three dimensions to the point of this line. So I'm going to hold down the C key. You can see the C key changes the shape of that central uh, portion of this manipulator. Holding down the C key will allow it to snap to curves. Then I'm going to click and drag it somewhere where it's visually overlapping the line okay, and release my mouse button. And then I'm going to click and drag it again and it snaps to that line. As long as it's visually lined up it should snap uh, in that way. And there we go, it's just lined up right on the edge of that line. If I hold C and keep dragging it, okay, that time I dragged it off, let's see if I can get it again. There we go. Um, it should snap to the line as much as it's able. You can see that it kind of snaps to that portion of the line over there. And just drag it all the way over to one of these endpoints. You should not have to even point it in the correct direction if you use um, the settings in uh, the animation menu that we're about to use. Uh, but it might not be a bad idea to try to point it in the right direction. So let's take a look here. With my geometry selected and my line selected, both of them, come up to Animate, Motion Path. Okay, let's see. Attach to Motion Path, and let's look in the Option box. So we've got a few options here. The time range, right now we're just using the slider, so it's only going to use 24 frames. Uh, but you can set the start and end positions for the time frame that you would like it to cover. And this is the time it will take it to go from one end of the line to the other end of the line. Okay, so I'm just going to use time slider for now. 24 frames is fine for a demonstration. Okay, whether or not you want it to follow the line, so this will reorient the object so that the front of it, or the quote unquote front of it, because we can set what the front axis is, will point down the line every time the line curves and so this will drive this line like a car as opposed to moving like maybe a helicopter which points in one direction and can move to the side and backwards um, just by tilting so in this case so the front axis is X let me check yeah front axis is X for this object so X is pointing down the pointy end of this object that should be fine we can set the up axis as well right now that's positive Y so here we have positive Y okay um, world up type vector up, scene up, object up. You can play around with that and see what that does. For now the up is just going to be locally on the object for the Y vector there. Um, we can invert the up, invert the, the front. We can allow the object to bank which is to automatically roll as it turns. Um, I'm going to leave that off because I want to control that myself um, rather than let Maya try to make those decisions. So here we have both of them selected. I'm going to hit attach. You can see it's pointing down the line. And as I scrub the timeline, you can see that it reorients itself to drive in the direction of the line. Okay, so that's all working out. We've got a couple extra controls and a new method of animating right now. You might notice that even though I've got my object selected, I have no keyframes on my timeline right now. Well, that's because all these keyframes are located now inside of this input node here, Motion Path 1. If I click on that, we can see the U value is what's animated right now. And what the U value is, is from 0 to 1 from the beginning of the line to the end of the line. So here at 0 we're at the beginning of the line. If I move it about halfway we get roughly halfway um, point of the U value so almost 0.5 and if I move it all the way to the end we get a full value of 1. So by grabbing this point and moving it and it looks like it won't let me update it live so I'll just type it in. So if I put in 0.5 this is how far we go in 24 frames instead of all the way to the end of the line. If I put it back to 1, it'll go all the way to the end of the line. So this is your primary method of animating uh, this object. You have to control this value and the shape of this line in order to control the animation. It's a little bit different from what we're used to, but it's fully capable of doing anything that we want it to do as long as we plan correctly. The other controllers that we have um, do some interesting stuff. So we've got front twist. So if I control that, we can see that this is like a barrel roll uh, movement. Okay, we'll twist it left and right, and this is what would automatically be keyed if we set bank um, to be activated. In fact, it wouldn't even, uh, to my knowledge, key this. It would just move this um, procedurally and allow us to to use the front twist as well. I prefer to have more control rather than less, so I leave that off. Uh, up twist, which is the I'm not sure in aviation what you call this one. 
This might be yaw or something, I'm not sure, but it's twisting it along the vertical axis. So if we needed to adjust um, which direction this object was pointing as it flew, we can use that. Um, and if it was something a little bit more complicated than a paper plane, we'd probably need that. Um, but I don't think we would need that with a paper plane, unless it was to help with this turn. For instance, this turn right now is very, very sharp. If we wanted this to look more natural or maybe like it impacted a wall, we would definitely end up using this controller at some point. And then finally, we've got side twist, which is the flipping forward and backward control. Uh, if you were stalling in midair, you would definitely need to use this if you encountered turbulence or any sort of uh, strange flying uh, conditions. You would definitely need to use this. But with those three combined, we have the ability to rotate this in any way that we want. We can move it anywhere we want with this line and at any speed we want by using the U value. So we've got everything that we need to do any sort of animation which needs to follow a complex curving path uh, using these tools.